99% of supplements are snake oil, but there are some supplements alongside a great diet, exercise, sleep and life purpose that actually make a difference. Starting of course with creatine. The International Society of Sports Nutrition concluded that creatine supplementation is the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes in terms of increasing high intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass. There's also great evidence that it reduces muscle damage and enhances recovery from intense exercise. And while it did have its issues, a new meta-analysis concluded that creatine supplementation improves the memory of older adults. When it comes to safety, studies lasting up to five years have consistently shown that creatine supplementation poses no adverse health risks. And no, creatine does not cause hair loss. I personally take 5 grams every day, including on the days that I don't work out. The next supplement that actually makes a difference is collagen peptides. We've got a meta-analysis of 10 separate randomized controlled studies that all show that collagen supplements improved aspects of skin health, including moisture, elasticity, and wrinkle number. I take 10 to 15 grams every day, and keeping with the theme of skin health, let's have a look at hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is the backbone of our connective tissue. It holds everything together, but the quantity of hyaluronic acid, it decreases as as we age, to the point where a 75 year old person only has one quarter of the amount of hyaluronic acid in their skin compared to a 19 year old person. And we've got multiple human randomized controlled studies all showing that hyaluronic acid supplements improve skin health, with the latest one being published in 2021, where compared to placebo, hyaluronic acid supplements significantly improved wrinkles, water content of the skin, and skin elasticity. Regarding safety, there was a concern that hyaluronic acid supplements could fuel cancer growth which is the last thing that we want but this was thoroughly explored where hyaluronic acid was given to mice that already had tumors and there was no accelerated tumor growth with hyaluronic acid so personally i take 200 milligrams of the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid before we continue down the list if you do want to accelerate your longevity journey and support the channel please consider signing up to my patreon where all members get early access to my videos access to my five years younger online course that goes through the optimal diet, exercise, sleep, and skincare routine taken directly from the latest clinical guidelines. Plus, from the powerhouse support level and above, you get access to the Discord server where you can connect with me and other members as we share the latest longevity research and answer questions. Proceeds go towards funding the rapamycin clinical study. The next supplement on the list is psyllium husk. Our microbiome, or the bacteria that grow in our gut, is incredibly important to our overall health, and we want to feed our microbiome by giving it fiber. And to drive this point home, a 2016 Cochrane review concluded that total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, they decrease with increasing fiber intake. Personally, I mix 5 to 10 grams of psyllium husk into my morning smoothie every day. It helps keep me fuller for longer. Moving on to omega-3, the Mayo Clinic recently published a meta-analysis concluding that omega-3 supplements result in a statistically significant reduction in the risk of heart attack with high grade certainty. I take one capsule every day. Next is TMG or trimethylglycine. So this year we had a massive meta-analysis that was looking at the risk factors for dementia and one of the clear risk factors was high levels of homocysteine in the blood. And by taking TMG we can lower homocysteine. Now TMG is found in foods such as beets, spinach and whole grain breads. And the average daily intake is between 100 and 300 milligrams every day. So most of us are already getting some TMG, but personally I add to that by supplementing with one gram. Next is a category of vitamins. Now I want to emphasize that I'm not recommending mega dosing. All I suggest is reaching the optimal intakes. This includes vitamin D3, 1000 international units, vitamin B3, so personally I take 50 milligrams of niacin, vitamin K2, 120 micrograms, and this is for bone strength, zinc, 8 milligrams, and magnesium, 120 milligrams. So you could select a multivitamin so long as you're not mega dosing, or you could take these as individual supplements. And the final supplements that I want to mention is glycine and NAC. It seems that throughout our life, we want to 
strike a perfect balance between oxidants and antioxidants. But from the age of about 45, the oxidants, they start winning. So our levels of a powerful antioxidant called glutathione start to plummet. Glycine and NAC are building blocks for glutathione, and a recent study showed that older adults who supplemented with glycine and NAC, they corrected their glutathione levels, and they improved their mitochondrial performance, or the powerhouses of their cells. And out of everything that I've discussed on this list so far, this is the least evidence-based one. Personally though, from the age of 45, I would supplement with 1 gram of NAC and 1 gram of glycine. We've talked a lot about supplements, and they're certainly not a replacement for a great diet. But when it comes to diet, many people aren't getting enough protein. So make sure to check out this next video here that goes through all of the research around the best protein intake. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.